you know, a word to describe my, my journey, uh, you know, in the USL to the MLS is, uh, you know, it's humbling. It, it truly is humbling. From a soccer star at Gonzaga University to not knowing where his talents would take him, the road to becoming a professional athlete is an arduous one. A story Zach Scott can tell you firsthand. To be honest, I mean, professional soccer wasn't, wasn't even something I really was going to chase. It wasn't going to be the end of the world if I didn't make it. Um, but I, I knew I wanted to at least try, and my family has just been been there from day one. There was a point there with the uh, with the USL team that my my wife was essentially supporting us. Um, you know, I wasn't making very much money. There was you know even a game by game basis where if I played, I would get paid. You know, um, so it was just. I mean, it was just huge that she would she would be willing to give up so much in order to let me let me chase my dreams. And once I got into the USL, it was always my goal to get you know into Major League Soccer. I wasn't one of the guys that it, they expected to make the team. I mean, it was a really interesting and difficult process all at the same time because I had to I had to be honest with myself. I had to make plans as if it wasn't going to work out. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, I had a I had a wife, I had two kids, you know, it was pretty stressful, but at the same time, it was, it was soccer, it's what I love to do. Not only did he earn a spot on the team, but he started, playing the full 90 in Seattle's inaugural MLS match. You know, I signed my contract a week before that game. <laughs> I mean, that, that, to get to play in that game was the furthest thing on my mind. It was, all I was looking, you know, for at that point was to just be on the Sounders, you know, I mean, I, I, couldn't have cared less if I would have sat on the bench the entire year. You know, I was just so happy to finally have made it. You know, being given that opportunity to come in and immediately start was was fantastic. I mean, it was just, it was surreal. It was something, it, it's hard to put into words because for so many years we had, you know, maybe gotten 3,000 people at a game and then to get that tenfold in the first, you know, Major League Soccer season, you know, 30, over 30,000 people that first game was just, it was, it was Absolutely. Insane. My first memory is walking out of the tunnel and seeing everybody with the scarves up, you know, and just the the sheer volume that, you know, everybody was cheering out was just, it was mind-blowing. I try to describe to people uh, playing in front of our, our fans, it's like they do such a good job and are so loud. It's like you don't even need a full stadium to, to get that full stadium effect. What was it like being a rookie at 28 years old? <laughs> um, it was being a rookie. I mean, it, was, <laughs> it was, you know, getting to, you know, see everything for the first time, you know, get to experience new stadiums, get to play in front of bigger crowds. You know, it was new and exciting. And, you know, I still, I still feel like a rookie out there. You know, I just, I want to soak everything in. I never want to take anything for granted. And that's something I try to, you know, pass along to our young guys. Our, you know, what, what an amazing blessing and opportunity you have. I mean, some of you guys come right into, you know, this team having not seen, you know, games where you're playing in front of 500 people in Virginia Beach, you know? And now you're playing against 50,000 people this past weekend, mm -hmm. you know? So I try to, you know, stress that to those young guys. Like, this is, this is something special. This is something you can't take for granted. Sound advice to the younger players from a 10-year veteran. Uh, 10 years getting to, you know, chase around a soccer ball and, you know, to kick people and, you know, do do what I love. I mean, I I, I wouldn't have imagined it in my wildest dreams. Um, you know, I, I said earlier, you know, I for such a long time, you know, I, I had to look at each season and decide, you know, as a family, is this something that we wanted to continue to do? You know, did we still want to... Um, continue to let me chase kind of this just this game you know that I love I can't say unexpected because I have worked really hard for it but at the same time it's um, you know it's just it's cool at 32 to be you know to be able to still play this game and to play the game with the intensity that Scott does you wouldn't guess he's been doing it for the last 10 years and that's how he wants to keep it I've told my wife and I've told you know, my coaches that if I didn't, 
If I didn't feel like I was improving as a soccer player from year to year, then I would I would stop playing. I mean, I don't I don't want to be a guy that's just you know on a roster for a paycheck. You know, I want I want to be helping the team. You know, uh, in whatever capacity that is. But you know, on the personal side, if I didn't feel like I was continually improving as a player, um, you know, it's just it's not worth it to me to. You know, to just, again, just be earning a paycheck for nothing. Not only did he earn a paycheck, but he earned the respect from the Seattle faithful. For me to get any sort of recognition, which is, you know, not anything I've ever played this for. I mean, I could care less if people know who I am or what my name is. Um, but to see, you know, a su support group like, you know, the Emerald City supporters spend that time, spend that money to, you know, Give me that gift. I mean, it's just, it's mind blowing to me that that they do that. You know, I, it, if I could have after the game, you know, ran up there and shook everyone's hand, I, I would have. You know, it was just, it was so special. And you know, I've had, you know, family kind of put it in perspective. You know, after the fact, like, like do you realize like what what just happened today? You know, that you know at a major league soccer game in front of, you know, 40,000 people that, you know, your likeness was on a TIFO, you know, it was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. The guys at Hemel, for them to, for them to want to do this for the Sounders and then to choose me to make a custom board for it, I mean, that's like, I mean, one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me, you know, it's just, it, it's such a blessing to have, you know, so many people that have felt willing to, you know, lend me that support. I think it's ridiculous when other, you know, other franchises will say that they have the best fans in the league because it's just, it's, there's no comparison. I mean, Seattle is above and beyond, uh, you know, the best fans in the league. I mean, we've gone to, we've gone to away stadiums where our fans have traveled and drowned out their home support. Praise, fame, and adoration are things Scott doesn't want nor expect as a sounder, but there is still one thing he's hoping to get that has still eluded him. I don't think there's like anything specific that I want to accomplish, you know, on the personal side. I mean, I've done more than I ever thought I could um, and done more than a lot of people expected that I could. Um, you know, I just I want to help Seattle win a championship. I mean, that's that's first and foremost. I think the organization deserves it. I think our, our fans deserve it. And, um, you know, I think I think it's attainable. Maybe that goal is what keeps Scott here in Seattle to fight for something he believes this city, his city, so rightfully deserves. Seattle is just top notch all around. I mean, this is this is where it is if you want to play soccer. I can't imagine anyone wanting to play anywhere else but here. I mean, myself included. I mean, I don't know. I don't think I I could leave. I don't think I would want to chase anything else other than you know ending my career in Seattle. Me preguntaron si podría hacer un anuncio y pensé que era porque yo juego para los Seattle Sanders. No puedo porque mi inglés no es muy bueno. That's true. Entonces me dijeron que el anuncio era de padres, niños y familias. Eso es muy importante para mí y le dije que yo hago lo que puedo hacer. No importa cuál idioma tú hablas, hay un idioma universal que nuestros niños comprenden y necesitan. Y es el amor y el cariño de los padres. Be a good parent, the same ball in your child's life.